Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today we went fishing and caught this ugly rascal. A long nosed gar. Trash fisher treasure? Stay tuned to find out. crap they're like needles too they're already just trying to touch them they'll spike you look at those things he's a swimming dinosaur okay so what this is not going to be it's not going to be a tutorial on how to clean this guy I'm gonna tell you right now this is the very first one I've ever cleaned in my life but uh, we watched the videos on how to do it. Uh, I've actually watched people do it before. I've just never done it myself. So, uh, it's going to be our first time. So, we're going to try to open this thing up and take those back straps out of him. Then we'll get to what I know how to do, which is cook fish. Getting in behind those scales. The armor plate, you have to go in at an angle. I'm gonna cut him right down to the to the bottom. I'm gonna go way back here by his uh, by his ass end. Try to do the same thing. Right here just ahead of his front fin. Or his uh, I guess this would be his um, his last top fin. Kind of find the right scale layer that Goes up there. Alright. Now I see a lot of guys use tin snips. I have these uh, very sharp pruning scissors. So we're going to give them a shot to go right down the top. And they seem to be working pretty well. Maybe a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Well, you can hear that breaking through those scales. Ow! Teeth are freaking razor sharp. Alright, get in there. Like everybody says to do, and just peel this skin back. It's very stiff. Very bony. Very sharp. You notice I do have a glove on. I'm trying to get you a camera angle there. Just bending it open and following it around with the knife. I'm using a stiff bladed fillet knife today. That I took some time and sharpened a bit just for this process. So I got him down on that side. We'll repeat the process on the other side. Okay, so we kind of got him peeled down the uh, down the back there. You can kind of see where his backbone is. So we're gonna go in here. And I may have to sharpen my knife again after doing that last process, but we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna go right down, right beside his rib cage. Uh, or I mean, beside his backbone, right down the rib cage. And from what I've learned about this, is that rib cage pretty much goes the whole length of that fish's body um, all the way down there to that fin. So what we're taking off is this top loin right here. You see it separating, just rolling that right off. And I can feel the ribs now. They do go way down here. And I'm not putting enough pressure on it to go through the ribs. We don't want to get into the guts of this guy. We just want to peel that loin right off the top of them. 
just like that. I said, uh, I think it's dull, just to, it's dull my knife just to peel that uh, off of there. But that's what we're looking for right there. One beautiful gar loin. Something very important, guys. This is the gar's row, and I don't know how I managed to actually get some of that to come out there. Think down here at this end. All right, poisonous, but everybody tells you poison, poison, poison. This is some of the best catfish bait known in Florida. We used to actually uh, get the gar just for the row to sell to the commercial cat fishermen. That is the best catfish bait in Florida for this time of year. So there's what we're uh, left with after that cleaning process. So it was much simpler and easier than I thought it was going to be. Uh, all I used was uh, my good stiff old uh, uh, flay knife there and a pair of these are like um, they're micro pruning shears. I did sharpen them a little bit before we started. You could use 10 snips uh, or very uh, heavy duty kitchen sh shears or scissors would probably also work. And I know that I've seen somebody use surgical scissors, but that is some pretty meat right there. So now let's uh, let's figure out what we're going to do to make that into a great backwoods gourmet dish. So the person who uh, told me how good this was today said that you know he tried it and it has uh, about the same texture as alligator, and I can notice that when going through this knife with the knife. Uh, it is is not probably going to be a you know a flaky fish. It feels exactly like a tenderloin of alligator, which is standard reason. Both both of those uh, critters are are pretty old. Okay, pretty old fish or in animals. So I'm going to kind of go default to treating this like alligator. I'm going to put it right into a, a zipper lock bag. And uh, here I'm going to give it a little flavor and put just a little, just a little bit of mojo. It's just a generic mojo um, marinade. A little bit of that in there. Going to zip the bag up. Maybe. And push most of the air out. Seal it the rest of the way. And then we're going to let that marinade for maybe about a half hour before we go any further. But we'll squish them all around real good make sure they all got some of that goodie touching them. Put them right back in the ice. So here we go uh, prep on our gar bites our gar nuggets or whatever you want to call them. We got uh, some Zatarain's fish fry mix. Here we go right there. This is the wonderful um, my favorite one. It's wonderful. And it is, it says wonderful right on the box. Wonderful. Okay. But just to help, help it out just a bit, I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of plain cornstarch in there. Right in there with the, uh, the wonderful, I'm just going to mix it with my fingers a bit. Alright, just kind of get it. That's going to lighten this up, make it a lot crispier. Now we have our gar nuggets. We've been marinating in mojo marinade for about 30 minutes. Just going to go ahead and drop, start dropping them all in there. I'm trying to leave most of the marinade in the zipper lock bag. Right. Get all those guys out of there. And here, you know, wet hand, dry hand ain't going to work. You're just going to have to get in there and toss them in it. All right. Now that they're nicely tossed, we could stop there. But we'll, what will help uh, make them even crispier? Here we have our, our egg mayo wash, uh, two tablespoons of mayo, one fresh egg, whipped together with a whisk. Put about half of those at a time in there, and we're gonna roll them in that in that mix. Get them completely coated. Oh yeah. Now we'll drop them one at a time back into our dry mix. And those are going to pick up a lot more dry mix now. It 
So we'll repeat that process with the remaining ones over here on the dry. Let's go ahead and get them in there. Then we can roll these all around and get them completely coated. Make sure that they're separate. That you don't have one big blob. They're not stuck together. They're going to look just like that. got some of our uh, sriracha butter sauce. We have some here melted in this little bowl. We also have some that we allowed to kind of uh, solid, you know, partly solidify again. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give that a swipe on the bowl with the back of the spoon like that. I'm going to bring in some of our long nose gar nuggets right in that sriracha butter. And over here, the other big cast iron, we have, you know, just good old, you know, cast iron fried potatoes with the skins, right in some, uh, you know, some oil right there on the big cast iron. And that right there is All a right, meal so for king. This is the God's honest truth. You know, I've been living in Florida all my life. I've caught, you know, thousands of these damn things, probably. You know, not on purpose. Just, uh, you know, it's a bycatch. Things you catch when you're bass fishing. Things you catch when you're, you know, fish for crappie. Speck perch, we call them here in in, uh, in Florida. Never once. Never once. If I ever thought about, you know, bringing them home. Flaying them out and eating them. So here we go. I'm going to give it a little bit of that, uh, that sriracha sauce on it. We'll see how it is. As you might can hear from the crunching, it's very crispy, and I'll tell you what, it tastes almost identical to alligator. Very, very, um, I guess, low on the fish scale, more on the chicken scale, which is where I put alligator at, and, uh, you know, it's got a little bit more texture. It's just like a nice tender tenderloin from alligator. So I guarantee you, Next time I catch one of these rascals, it's coming to the house, and we're going to do the same recipe with them. So the answer to the question, is a gar a trash fish or a treasure? Uh, if you gauge that by how hard it is to clean, not any, you know, it's not that much worse than cleaning a catfish. You know, a little harder to cut through. Uh, does it taste better? This is better than catfish, okay? Better than catfish. So I can call this one a definite treasure.
Hey, thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. If you like what we're doing, hit that like button right down there. If you subscribe to our channel and we wish you would, click right here. To see our last video, it's right up here. And for a whole playlist of our trash fish and treasure videos, they're right up there. We'll see you next time.